you're under attack from Bigfoot, are you going to be diarying to this extent? Hi, my name's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have a video presentation on why you should not go book shopping when you already own a bunch of books that you have not yet read. Starting off today, I went to Salvation Army and Goodwill again. You would think maybe it hasn't been that long. Maybe they don't have a bunch of new stuff for her to buy yet. You would be wrong. There was a ton of stuff I did not have. Salvation Army. Six books. $7.92. First thing I got. Ruth Ware, Turn of the Key. I have already read this. I got it from the library on my Kindle. Read it. Loved it. Have loved most of Ruth Ware's books. I'm kind of starting a little collection. I'm planning to do a video about all of her different books at some point so I won't talk about this one too much but this is a mystery thriller about a woman who is a nanny in a high-tech smart house and one of the children dies and it's very good would highly recommend continuing with books I've already read that I purchased this is Rebel Angels this is actually the second in a series of kind of a book about some young girls in Victorian era that if I remember correctly they have access to some kind of magical world and potentially magical powers of some sort. I haven't read this in a long time. I'm planning to reread it and I had recently bought the first one also at Goodwill and I saw the second one so I picked that up too. This one I'm actually kind of excited about. It's called Miles from Nowhere. This is about a homeless teen in the 1980s She's a Korean immigrant living in the Bronx in the 1980s and her father leaves the family and her mother's mentally ill. So at age of 13, she decides she's better off living on her own and she's homeless and I liked the cover. It sounds really interesting. I'm gonna buzz through these because I have a lot. It's kind of embarrassing. This one, Oxygen. This looked really interesting to me. This is about a woman who is an anesthesiologist. It's a novel, but the author is an anesthesiologist in real life. And she is dealing with the fallout from the death of one of her patients. A young girl dies while under her care. I found that interesting because, you know, I'm currently in school to be in the medical field and it just seemed really interesting. I've never heard of this one. All right, this one, Orphan Train. This is one my sister recommended to me. And I have not really heard much about this, but I guess it is about the orphans are basically shipped by train from the East Coast to farmlands and such in the Midwest where they could potentially find families to home them and have them work on the farms and such. I don't know much else about it, but my sister said she enjoyed it. So I saw a copy of this and just went ahead and grabbed it. And then the, I, I don't know why I don't know why I needed to own the field guide to reptiles and amphibians of North America other than that I'm a book hoarder but now I own this and it's kind of amazing like, like look at this who would not want this how did this ever end up in Salvation Army it is in perfect condition and I think it literally cost me 50 cents so if you have any questions about reptiles or amphibians of North America, I've got you covered. All right, and then Goodwill. Goodwill was actually a good haul for me today. I found two books that I have had on my want to read but haven't got around to purchasing or can't get from the library on my Kindle. At Goodwill, I got four books for $2.39. First one is The Red Tent, and this is a retelling of the story of Dinah from the Bible, who was, I believe, one of Jacob's, yes, Jacob's children. If you ever read the Bible passage, I remember thinking this was so ridiculous, where they're listing all of the sons of Jacob. He has 12 sons by like four different women, and they're just listing all these children of his, and at some point they're just like, oh, and also he had a daughter named Dinah. Later in the book of Genesis, I think it is, there's an incident about her that I don't remember exactly. I think her brothers end up pawning her off to be married to somebody or something ridiculous like that. And this is basically kind of a fictionalized version of her story. And I've always kind of wanted to read it and haven't gotten around to it yet, but that much closer now. 
and then this one, Winter Girls by Lori Hall Sanderson. Uh, this is an author I quite like, and this is a book that's been on my want to read list for a while. Couldn't get it on my Kindle, had it on my Amazon wish list, and just kind of been keeping an eye on it, seeing if the price would ever drop. And found it today for 50 cents, so go me there. This is about a girl who has lost her best friend to an eating disorder, and she also has an eating disorder, and yeah. It's a mystery thriller I found for 50 cents as well. Uh, the cover says it's this year's Gone Girl, so could not pass that up. It's a young adult novel about two girls that are best friends until one of them disappears, and when she does, she leaves behind a list of things to do for her friend. And they're all kind of designed to like bring her out of her shell, it seems like. like kiss a stranger, go skinny dipping, dance until dawn, that kind of thing. So I think there's a romance, but then I think there's also a mystery of what happened to the friend and why she disappeared. So thought it sounded good. That's it for Goodwill. Moving on to Amazon. So Max Brooks, the author of World War Z, wrote a new book recently. I believe this is only his second novel. So when I saw this was coming out, I got super hyped about it. And I got this book like a week ago. I'm not gonna lie, I already read it. Unfortunately, it was pretty disappointing. It's about Bigfoot. Up by Mount Rainier, there's this community that is living on the grid, but off the grid. So like they're up in the mountains, but they have all the modern technology. They've got their solar panels, they've got their Wi-Fi, all of that. But then Mount Rainier erupts and everything gets taken out and the road gets closed down. So they're trapped up there possibly all winter. And then you can kind of tell from the beginning, like a firsthand account of the Rainier Sasquatch massacre. So you know right from the cover what this is gonna be about. And you're reading it and they get trapped up there and you're like, oh, Bigfoot's coming. And that's exactly what happens. And there's just not much else to it. It's okay, it's entertaining enough, but I was just expecting so much more from this after World War Z, because I feel like World War Z is really well thought out and plotted and deeper than this. This is literally just these people are in the woods and Bigfoot comes and they fight Bigfoot. And it's a found footage type of novel. So this is all written from the diary perspective of one of the women of one of the women that's there. And I thought it would have more stuff interwoven and there's like bits and pieces of interviews and stuff from other books, but just not enough. And the bulk of it is just this woman's diary, which would be fine, except if you're under attack from Bigfoot, are you gonna be diarying to this extent? Are you going to be sitting down and writing pages and pages and pages of details in between the Bigfoot attacks? No. Anyway, so this exists. And then I also ordered this because it was recently made into a movie and I thought that'd be fun for me and my husband to watch because he's not like a book person. So I was like, oh, I can read the book and then tell him all about the book while we're watching the movie, that type of thing. And also just because with everything that's been going on recently, I really wanted to educate myself more. This book is about a man who's a lawyer and is trying to help a man that is on death row for a murder that he did not commit. From what I understand, interwoven, there are a lot of other stories and information about, about the inequalities that black men in America face. And I just thought it would be good for me to read this one. And on that note, I have a box of books from a book outlet that I ordered. And this is kind of a long story, but basically I ordered these books from Book Outlet because I saw kind of a little advertisement saying, oh, find all of our books by black authors easily on this page. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went and I found this, which I've been meaning to read for a while. Uh, this is the other book by Angie Thomas, the author that wrote The Hate You Give, which I think more people have heard of and read. And I loved that book, so I've been meaning to read this one for a while. This is about a young girl who is aspiring to become a rapper. And I read The Hate You Give first because the whole rap thing not, doesn't really appeal to me as much. But I like this author so much, I was like, oh, I should definitely read this one too. And it's very highly rated, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. And then while I was on that page and I saw this book was available, 
I got this one, which also sounded really interesting. This is about a young woman who is starting over at a new school and she is HIV positive and she's trying to keep it secret because at her last school when it came out that she was HIV positive, things got really rough for her and she has just started dating someone and now she's kind of, now that the question of sex is on the table, she's really struggling because she doesn't want to reveal that she's HIV positive, but also, you know, she kind of has to if she wants to move forward with their relationship. And then she starts getting threatening messages that someone's threatening to expose her and her HIV positive status. So I got both of these books and then to fill out my order, I got a few more that I'll talk about in a minute. However, after I placed this whole order from this website called Book Outlet, I found out that there had been an event. So if you ever heard of Book Outlet, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an outlet website for books. The books are new, or once in a while they're new but damaged, like maybe they got damaged to their cover or something like that, and they're sold for discounted prices. And I've ordered from them before, always had really positive experiences ordering from them, and the prices are usually pretty good and they were having good sales. Literally the day after I placed this order, I found out that there had been an incident with Book Outlet. I found out on Instagram. Basically, someone had called out Book Outlet on Twitter because Book Outlet has this program called Blogger Friends where they have, basically they sponsor several YouTubers that talk about books. That's actually how I heard about Book Outlet because one of the booktubers that I first started watching, Books and Lala, she was one of the blogger friends. So someone called out Book Outlet and asked them why only one of their blogger friends was black. And <laughs> Book Outlet responded with this. And there is just so much wrong with that. I just, I, I can't even. And if you're a booktube person, obviously you probably already know about this, but if you're just one of my friends that is watching this video because, you know, you're my friend, this might be something you hadn't heard of. And it just really kind of hit me because of how racist that is. And like, this is a book company. Like, <laughs> I would have never expected a book selling company to have these type of views in to be this like blatant and terrible about it. Yeah, so basically I, I can't order from Book Outlet anymore, but I will continue telling you about the other books I did purchase from this website and these books all look good and you know, don't, don't hate on the books or anything, but Book Outlet sucks. All right, so I also have Kara Thomas, The Cheerleaders. This is about a town where the cheerleading squad suffers a number of deaths um, I think a couple of them seem to be accidental and then murders actually start and they never figure out who did it and they decide to disband cheerleading altogether, which is the weirdest reaction I could ever think of to the cheerleaders are being murdered. You know, like, <laughs> instead of let's find the murderer, let's get rid of cheerleaders. It sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> this is all taking place five years after the fact and one of the sisters of one of the victims is trying to find out who is responsible for the murders. Okay, so this is called Alex Approximately, and I read another book by this author and really enjoyed it. I talked about it in my underrated YA faves. This one is about a girl who has met a guy online, and she ends up moving to the same town as him and doesn't tell him that because she kind of wants to keep him like this perfect fantasy or whatever. And she ends up meeting another guy in real life that she's interested in and she can't decide pursue things with the online dream guy or the real life guy that's right in front of her and the big secret is the two guys are one and the same. <laughs> Which sounds like it would be a reveal but it's literally on the back of the book so I don't like that seems like that will be the plot twist but it, but it's right there. I don't know, I really liked her other book, Starry Eyes, so pick this one up to give it a chance. This one I literally bought because it was in clearance for like $2 and I thought the cover was beautiful. It's about twins 
one who has cancer and the other doesn't and how that affects both of them. I don't know, isn't that just the prettiest cover ever? I just think it's so pretty and it throws me back to my Lurley and McDaniel days. I'm calling it right now. I haven't read a single word of this book. Someone's gonna die. I'm just, I'm confident. So this is a book about a teenage girl that has become pregnant and the inside cover it sounds like she is trying to obtain an abortion but she needs to go out of state because it's not available where she lives and she doesn't want to tell her parents and her best friend doesn't agree with her decision so she ends up on a road trip with a girl she barely knows and then her best friend decides to come along too so it's just three girls that are on a road trip but obviously it's not could be your typical happy-go-lucky road trip because they're dealing with some pretty serious stuff. It just sounds really interesting to me and I'm interested to read these. So these are all young adults from Book Outlet, which I didn't do intentionally, just kind of did what I'd be, end up being drawn to on there. And then I also bought this mystery thriller because I've been really into mystery thrillers lately. And then after I bought it, I realized that I had read another one by this author and didn't particularly like it. This is about a man who, when he was a child, his two best friends were murdered and he started a podcast talking about that as an adult. And there's a new discovery and it launches a new murder investigation and I don't know, it sounds good enough. I'm not sure. Like I said, I didn't really like the other one by her, but that doesn't always mean I won't like this one. So, all right, and that's it. Have you read any of these? What did you think? Should I, what should I start with? What would you most like to see me talk about? Let me know down in the comments which you'd like to see me read first and please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos by me. Thanks, bye!